This week on Pop Fiction, Cancel Culture, Cybertrans, Jen vs. the Brain Dancers, and Ralphie D recommends something cool. Well done. <sighs> Professional. Okay, this is 252 Pop Fiction, where you'll find all the news and reviews in pop culture that's right to type. Today's top story. The gun was loaded with live bullets when Dante North fatally shot sound man Wichita Hutchinson on stage in El Paso, Texas. A stagehand accidentally handed Tay a loaded weapon and informed him it was safe to use seconds before the singer fatally shot the sound man. Wow. Wow. Right. So this was... Uh, that looks real. Oh. Yeah, this was during one of those, you know, concerts that weren't really... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Advertised. Yeah, and it wasn't very well. There was no sanctions. There was no safety guidelines. They were just out there wilding out. What happened to Public Enemy with their plastic Uzis? You can't shoot someone down with a plastic Uzi. Yeah. Yeah. Security of the first world. Yeah. Where were they? <laughs> Outside of Streamflix, Los Angeles offices, employees and cyber transgender actors staged a walkout. Demonstrators demanded that Streamflix invest more in psi, trans, and non-binary talent as well as take additional steps to combat transphobia and hate speech. Wow. Now, why the quotes? Because it's quoted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get I'm it. I'm not going to touch that. I mean, those are very real things uh, out there, you know, the transphobia and the hate speech. I think that uh, we should do our due diligence to keep those things at bay. And yeah, there's something to be said that cyber psychosis is more prevalent in the trans and non-binary community. Cyber but, psychosis. Yeah. So it was one of those things, too, where it's like, is it a thing? I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. Oh. Like, all I have to say is whatever you are, whatever your choices are, I don't care. <laughs> there you go. If everyone would just take that attitude, hey, I'm this one. I don't care. <laughs> Do what you got to do. I'll do what I got to do. You don't care about what I am. I don't care about what you are. So would that be, what's the anti, what's anti-empathy called? Uh, Not caring. <laughs> Anti-empathy. Oh, it's uh, apathy. 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 Yeah, yeah I don't care. <laughs> do what you want. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. There you go. That's the way I feel. You but know. it's in a, it's in a uh, well. Is it in a? It's not in a bad way or a good way. He's like chaotic no, it's neutral. Like if I'm walking down the street, <laughs> yeah, chaotic I, neutral. If I'm walking down the street, I know people aren't sitting there and wondering, boy, I wonder whether he's non-binary or is he this? They don't think that of me. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> Or it's obvious. <laughs> they don't you know have what? to think about it. You sound <laughs> kind of like um, uh, <laughs> when uh, oh my god. I didn't kill my wife. I don't, I don't care. care. <laughs> See, instead of the cancel culture, we have the I don't care culture. Mm -hmm. See, I, that's what I'm for. Why don't you save that for the fourth story? Okie dokie. Uh, <laughs> Kima Cervantes' conspiracy ideas have cost her another job. Her planned thriller with the White Wire, a right-wing media outlet, has been postponed. Unfortunately... The film will not be released anytime soon for fear of the government imposing vaccine restrictions on the industry. Oof. And producer Keltar Entertainment evoked right-wing talking lines about mandates and the precariousness of the current Hollywood landscape to justify the yeah. film's temporary shelving in an announcement. He also chastises Hollywood's ruling class for their extraordinary ruling class. <laughs> ruling, I hate air quotes. <laughs> Stupidest thing ever invented. I hate air quotes. <laughs> for their extraordinary overreach. Overreach. <laughs> yeah, that's air just, uh, again, I think that's just another story of the, of the blind leading the blind. And Kima has said multiple times on her social media platforms, during interviews and stuff like that. She's just one of those completely delusional people. Mm -hmm. She believes everything uh, uh, her says, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Keltar. Right. Just anything that comes out of his mouth, she's like, it's gospel. So, well, it's, yeah, some people I have to. I used to, to have think that. she was hot. Now, now I don't. not. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what the white wire is. I don't know who Kima Cervantes is. This is. Well, I'll tell you what. 
no one knows anything. Everyone thinks they know everything. And God damn it, people just need to learn more <laughs> you know, for themselves. You know what? That's all it boils down to. When I was a teenager, I had all the answers. But I should have wrote them down because now I don't have any of them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, as cancel culture becomes more and more ubiquitous in show business, comedians are finding it particularly difficult to ignore. When one's profession is to take the stage to shake up and lambaste pop culture and society, the odds that a joke or train of thought will venture into cancelable territory shoots up beyond even the most outspoken of celebrities. Wow, someone got their finger stuck in a <laughs> dictionary <laughs> right in this one. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Well wow. done, though. Wow. Um, hey, all we can do is just keep pressing on, and uh, at some point the pendulum will swing back the other way. So, and yeah, and it's funny too because when I, I put this story in there, specifically watching, it's not even really old comedians. It's like maybe this is like bits that are like only like five years ago, and when you watch them. The, just the vantage point that we have now, mm -hmm. watching him, where you're like, ooh, but you still laugh because it's still yeah. funny. If you if you think it's offensive, don't watch it. There you go. Don't cancel it. Just don't watch it. Say, so, you know what? You got a remote. Push the button. You know that's the way I feel. I'm a big proponent. I'm a big big uh, promoter of free yeah. speech. Yeah. There the you comedians go. are on the the the. the tip of the spear when it comes to free speech yes. and they we, I think they need to be protected from cancel culture they play on that line quite often I think they know what they're doing at the end of the day I mean if they say what they gotta say maybe it's the truth no. but this week's review is Jen versus the Brain Dance it's an investigation of pop diva Jen Synergies Synergies? Synergies alright <laughs> battled to be released from her Con yeah, conservatorship. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Which she has been in for over a decade. Wow. Pretty good. I do remember this happening to another pop diva, and uh, you know, you just gotta leave Jen Synergy alone. Yeah, just leave her alone, man. You know, she's truly outrageous. We all know. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And you know, uh, but to be completely fair and honest with this, it's like, is she crazy? I don't know. Does she act wild? Is it some of the things she does may or may not? But then you don't know how much of that has that, that slant to it. You it's know? just a goof, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just a goof. Yeah, know. and some people do things just for attention. Sometimes yeah. people do things, uh, you know, as a, uh, I need a hand to help me. Yeah. You'd probably be surprised or shocked by this, but I have no idea who that is. Yeah. You know what, JB? Uh, that seems to be a, a running theme. Uh, I believe we can go back to about three minutes ago where you said you just don't care. It's like, then why is he reading the news? <laughs> I don't care. Well, you know what? Care. He made me do it. This is, this is what America is about, all right? Even though you don't know what uh, this is, it doesn't mean you can't have an opinion. Yeah. You gotta That's, have an opinion. You gotta have an opinion. And it's funny because he does. <laughs> and he has no idea. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. But I have an opinion. Do you really uh, think God came down from heaven yeah. to stop those? This week, Ralphie D recommends Hills. Saw Pet Petritas, a clever and gifted young man born into a huge destiny beyond his comprehension, must travel to the universe's most deadly planet to save his family and people. This sounds familiar. <laughs> Only those who can overcome their own fear will live as sinister powers clash over the planet's only supply of the most valuable substance in existence. Oh, that sounds like Dune. Yeah, it does. Spice. <laughs> sounds exactly like Dune. Well, I'm sure it's not. This is called Hills, and it's yeah. Saul Petritas, <laughs> not <laughs> Paul. <laughs> it's still a sand dune. Hills. <laughs> <laughs> JB, yeah. you know why you're the favorite, my favorite person on this show? Because you, you play it straight. Yeah. <laughs> it straight took him to the sixth thing before he said, wait. <laughs> now that sounds familiar. So you pull the wool over my okay. ass. You never this, will. Nothing. <laughs> this week, JB remembers yes. tobacco inspired candy. 
<laughs> something you will never see again. Oh, my mm. God. Remember when you used to go to the ice cream truck and get the candy cigarettes? Yes. Oh. And pretend you were smoking when you blew the powdered sugar came out and looked like smoke? Yeah. Big League Chew? Yeah. Tobacco. Che- it's chewing gum that looks like chewing tobacco. And yeah. You- Put it in. And uh, besides the gum that you would puff and the uh, sugar would come out, there was also candy cigarettes that were actually hard candy. And uh, yeah. you would kind of bite down. It looked like chalk, but it yeah. was... It had a red those. tip on it. And it came in a little pack. A little pack, no, like yeah. A pack. Like a pack of... Like a, That's why it didn't come with a lighter. <laughs> I'm saying. It took me 20 years to quit those. <laughs> Uh, it's funny with the big league chew because they did that, and then ball players started actually chewing Switching the big, big league chew yeah. instead of chew. This tastes way better. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, and they had the commercial, especially when guys started getting throat cancer, and it was all coming out of. Mm. Oh goodness! Here's a question: Why do they call? Um, what What are three things you can call chew? Dip, Dip. snuff, chew. Uh, can't think of anything else off there. Sounds like JB cares now, about some. <laughs> why? Why dip? I dabble. Where, why, where does dip come from? Hell I always I wanted know. to know that. I thought because you always dipped it into your little pouch in your mouth. Could be. I think that was. Pre- I think you're shooting pouch. from your hip. I don't think you really know. I don't know. I, mm. I don't know where the term comes from. If you know why they call it dip, please write in. Those 12 D. people that are watching, write in and tell us about Somebody's got to know. I'm Ralphie D, and that's news to me. Somebody's stop me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Kawhi cool Kurt. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. We'd like to hear what you think about dip. <laughs> Leave us a comment down below about this in general, <laughs> and let your opinion be heard. And if you like this video, this particular one, this one right here, Please check out other videos on our channel. And I'm JB. I'd like to give a shout out to my man AM. Possibly a comic safari, but I'm not <laughs> sure. And this is 252 Pop Fiction, where you hear it. First. First. Why do you read that every time? Don't you know how to say that? No, so he has to read it. <laughs> it's Ah, uh, uh, daughter, pull yourself together.